Hey, and welcome to another one of Rich and Jen's Cooking Adventures. And today we're gonna do something that is a great salad for a get together for a holiday, such as Memorial Day or 4th of July. And um, you can take it on a picnic, um, you know, or just have it at a barbecue. You can bring it when you have a uh, item to bring when someone invites you over. It's real easy to make. Um, you guys have probably had some kind of similar salad before, but mine's a little different and I'll show you why. So what we're doing today is a broccoli salad with cheese and bacon. We're going to make the dressing. Um, we'll talk about what we did. Uh, the first thing is I used a pound of bacon and I don't know if you guys have used this method or not, but I want to show you something if you want to come on over here. Um, I used to do the bacon in the skillet for years. And then I got to where I learned this method, and this is so much easier, and I'll tell you why. Um, I take a cookie sheet, put a piece of wax paper, lay the bacon long ways, set the oven to 400 degrees, and then it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And the reason that I like doing it this way is twofold. First of all, the bacon slices say nice and flat. So if you're using them for a recipe, so much better looking and so much easier to handle to cut up or to be decorative. And the second thing that I really like is the easy to clean up because after I pour off my bacon grease to save for later cooking, you just pull this off, wash it down, no splatter all over the counter and everything's ready to go. So this is definitely the way to do the bacon. Jan, it looks like you have done a lot of chopping to prep for this salad. Well, I did. I'm going to tell you what we did. Uh, the first thing you need is about eight cups of broccoli. Now you can get a couple of big heads or you can buy the pre-cut that you can buy packaged at the grocery store if you don't want to have to do all that work. I bought the packaged at the grocery store, but what I do is I dump it out and I cut all of the big thick stem ends off because I don't like those. Yeah, it's dry. They get real hard to eat. And then I cut these in a little bit smaller pieces so that when people want to eat this salad, they don't have like a whole head of broccoli in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so this is ready to go. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little tip on chopping too today. Um, one of the things that is the, makes cooking the very most difficult is not having a sharp knife. And I just totally 100% believe that this is super important, especially since I was in an industry where we did use knives for a living filleting fish. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually safer to have a sharper knife. Yep, because if you have a dull knife, you push way harder. And then if you are pushing really hard and you make a miscut, cut, you will really gash yourself. So um, this is a knife sharpener that I keep at the house that I absolutely love. Um, super simple. Um, it's got a coarse and a fine, and all you got to do is put a tiny bit of water in the bottom of this little container just to give it something for the stone. And then I pull it across a couple of times on the coarse, and then a few times on the fine, and that's it. Wipe your knife down because you're always going to have a little bit of that that comes off of the surface of the knife from sharpening oh, it yeah. and you don't want that in your food. And I will put a link um, to Amazon if you want to pick one of these up. A lot of people use the long sharpeners, but I've just found this works great for me and I like it a lot. So we've got our eight cups of broccoli prepped and ready mm -hmm. to go. Um, and the next thing we're going to need is two cups of cheese. Um, you can grate your own or if you're in a hurry, I'm making a couple recipes today, so I cheated and bought the pre-grated. I usually like to grate mine, but time is uh, a little short today. So I have two cups of the cheese, and we're going to pour that right in here now on that, the salad. That looks like two different types of cheese. Yeah, this is the um, uh, Mon Colby Jack cheese. Um, you can use Colby cheddar. cheddar. Yeah, you can use uh, you know the sharp if you want, or the mild cheddar, whatever you want in here, because okay. you know it's all going to taste good. So that's ready to go. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put in our bacon. This is one pound of bacon. And I did this in the oven earlier, let it cool off and chopped it up. Now I like my pieces to be a little bit bigger 
because when people get a bite, I want them to taste the bacon. So I leave mine a little bigger. Now you can make these smaller if you want to, just totally up to you. And so we're gonna dump that right on in there. Now, what kind of bacon was that? Do you remember? That's just your regular, I don't like the flavored bacon. So it's just your regular standard bacon. I don't like the applewood. I did that one time and I didn't think it tasted very good. And I don't like the maple flavor or anything. So I just use your regular bacon. Okay. And I got to keep an eye on Rich because <laughs> if I'm not looking, when you all look back again, some of the bacon will definitely be missing. I, I do like Many bacon. People. Nobody <laughs> I've ever met yeah. doesn't like bacon. The next thing that I do that's a little different, and I know this is going to sound a little crazy, but you have to try it. It's fantastic. These are craisins. I know you guys have heard of craisins. Let me get the package and let you take a look at it. I'm sure you know, but these are also really good in salad. So I eat these craisins. Um, they add a sweetness. So when I make this recipe, I can cut back on the sugar a little bit. I know you guys watch our videos where we go out to eat, but honestly, the other six days a week, we usually cook, Rich right. and I both, barbecue, we use the Blackstone, um, we do things inside an air fryer. So I do kind of try to watch the calories because you can't eat like that all no, the time. it's and not just, sustainable. No, and it's not healthy either. So we're gonna take these craisins and we're gonna dump them in. And like I said, it gives a textural thing and it also allows you to cut the sugar. Um, I used to put a cup of sugar in and now I just use a half a cup. And the next thing that we're gonna put in is a cup of chopped sweet onion. Mm. Um, that's just gonna go right straight in there as well. We don't wanna waste any, we love onions. Yep. And I like the sweet onion. Um, you can put anything you want in. Uh, I don't use the purple onions uh, much they anymore. Give me, they yeah, give me heartburn Rich and bo both, Rich and I, as we've gotten older, those purple onions just give us heartburn and I really don't know why, but it stinks getting older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we have a cup of mayonnaise. Now, if you wanted to use light mayonnaise, you could definitely use the light mayonnaise, um, but you do need to use some sort of mayonnaise. Okay, what kind of mayonnaise do you use? Hellman's? I use, I usually use, um, I, well, I honestly, as long as it's something that I don't hate, I get it on sale. Mayonnaise at the grocery store the other day was $7.99, and that's crazy for a thing of mayonnaise. But I went into Kroger and they had the Hellman's mayonnaise on sale and it was um, like $3.99. This is crazy. I had an on the box, on the container was a $2.25 off coupon. So it was a dollar and 30 something cents when I got done. So I bought the limit, which was five and put them in the pantry. That is a deal and a half. Well, your, your Duke fans are gonna probably- Well, I love comment. Duke's mayonnaise too. Um, I use Duke's, I use um, Hellman's, or I use Kraft. And I'm really, I, I mean, I know people say they have a real big preference, but I like them all, so. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is a half a cup of sugar. Uh, if you wanted to use Splenda, you could. Um, you could also cut this out. There is sweetness from the craisins, so if you have somebody who can't have the sugar, uh, you could, like I said, cut that out. So, But we're gonna go ahead and dump that in there. But that's not really a lot of sugar for the amount of salad. I mean, look at that bowl that we're making. Right, now let me ask you something. You're mm -hmm. using two different bowls. Mm -hmm. Does it make it easier to incorporate the mayonnaise with this or could you put it all in one bowl or? <laughs> you could, but you know, when I did the potato salad, the lady said, why did you, why didn't you mix your dressing separately and then pour it on? It's a lot easier and she was right. Uh, but making the video, I have done that making the video though. I, I don't know. I was, I'm new at this. And so I was just like doing it in the bowl. So I'm doing it this way today because it really is easier. Okay. Um, okay. So then, and then the next ingredient Quarter that we cup. have of just regular white vinegar. Okay. All right. Then we're going to add, and I'm not a big salt person. No. We're going to add a little bit of salt because we're doing a lot. And then we're going to add some fresh cracked pepper. Um, you know, you can definitely add a few of your own ingredients in here if you want to um, jazz it up. But this is basically what I use. Okay, so we're going to get this started. I guess that would be a lot easier than trying to mix it all together. Yes, for sure. And uh, the, the um, viewer that said that, I was like, yep. And I told her, I was like, yep, you're right. So anyway, we're gonna whisk this together. We're gonna get it really incorporated. 
And that's probably good enough. Then we're going to take this and we're going to scrape the sides down so we got all that salt and pepper and everything in there. And this is really not that much for as much of this broccoli salad as we have. And it does keep the calories down and make it a little bit healthier. All right. So now all we really need to do on this is mix it together really well. Now I will tell you that um, generally I make this the day before. And the reason that I do that is because I think that the flavors meld a lot better together if you make it the day before and let it sit. All right, so we're gonna plate this up and, uh, and we're gonna put it in a bowl and show you what it looks like. And then me and Rich are gonna try it. Well, the salad is ready to go. When I started mixing this, I thought it needed a little bit more. So I put about another half a cup of mayonnaise in here. And again, let me tell you that if you want it to be more mayonnaise, you just double that dressing recipe. Um, but make sure you make this at least in the morning if you're gonna use it that night, preferably the day before. So I saved a piece of bacon and that just for decoration on the top and um, then you're ready to go. And we made this because we're going over to some friend's house uh, for the Memorial Day weekend. We have the little Memorial Day uh, party. So yeah. please, uh, this weekend or Memorial Day weekend, um, in your thoughts, please uh, thank the, our fallen soldiers. They gave the ultimate sacrifice so we can enjoy this salad. Yes, and live in a wonderful, country. God bless America. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So now, yeah. and that being said, it's time to take a taste test. So try. Uh, when you taste it, make sure you get some of the craisins in your bite, because I'm telling you, it really makes the flavor uh, really, really good. It's super firm. Mm. That's good. And although it looks dry, doesn't it have a lot of flavor? Mm -hmm. If you put too much dressing, I almost feel like it overpowers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This keeps it nice and light with good flavor. Right, and as it as it sits, this this also kind of softens the broccoli just a little bit, just mm -hmm. from the moisture. So, so this is a great make ahead. Well, Rich, we uh, appreciate you guys watching. Um, we are um, going to try to do these cooking videos a little more often. We uh, got back from a cruise and then everything was kind of crazy and we kind of gotten behind. So we wanted to put this out there for the holiday weekend. Yeah, we get a lot of comments on the cooking um, little videos you make, Jen. And I guess that's it. If there's anything in particular um, you guys would like to see, you can leave it in the comments. Um, I will have this recipe posted in the description and uh, we really appreciate you watching. Um, we are getting close to our 5,000 subscriber mark. When we do that, we are going to do a giveaway. We don't know what we're going to do yet. Yeah. But it's going to be something. So and we need to make <laughs> it so whoever wins can use it. Say they live in California. They yeah. can't come to a restaurant here. Right. So it may be like a Home Depot. Yeah, it might be something. Hobby Lobby or something. Right, right. Or something like that. Or maybe even like an online, um, you know, an online thing where you can get something uh, cooking wise or um, you know, like whatever an Amazon thing or something. Yeah, yeah, that would probably be fun. That way, anybody could use it. True. So, um, I'll also put a link for that knife sharpener um, in there. Uh, it's not like our Amazon store or anything. It's just something that I really appreciate having and using. So, that being said, I guess that's it. Everybody have a great uh, holiday, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.